What's going on guys? This is Kaisho. Welcome back. So we are back with another video. So in this video, we are going to cover top 5 budget decks post October 2024 ban list. So we are going to cover the implications of the new format and we are going to cover and discuss the budget decks that is appropriate to play in this current metagame and these decks will be very budget and potentially under 5,000 pesos only or something like $100 no so it is very budget and uh, disclaimer this list doesn't have the expensive cards right now like Little Knight and Fuaros because those two are really extremely expensive at the moment so we are not going to run those cards and these decks doesn't need those cards in order to perform so our video is entitled a blast from the past because we are going to uh, unravel a lot of previous decks and other uh, previous meta decks that was a tier 1 back in the day but now they have uh, returned in this uh, meta due to the ban list so I think you have an idea what decks could those be and let's start uh, before we venture in our video we are going to discuss what is a budget deck so budget decks are decks that don't have the same monetary value as the top tier meta decks and expensive decks so the price point of these decks doesn't even compare around the price point of Malice for example, no? Blue Eyes and Dryzeal. Those are very expensive and it is already given that they are very strong and the top dogs in this uh, meta. So these decks uh, will be very inferior in terms of monetary value and also decks that are easily built with cheap cards on the market. So we won't include the ridiculously expensive cards in the market so expect that the cards here are pretty much cheap and very much affordable for most people and also decks that are somehow tailored to fit within a certain certain budget so the budget that we are talking about in this video is 100 dollars so more often than not uh, the decks here will uh, sort in 100 dollar budget or 5000 pesos in our currency in the philippines so it is very budget and you are going to be able to build this deck with those uh, budget alone and also at the same time uh, these decks have been good and even though they are budget they can fare against the meta game and even though these decks doesn't really have that value against the uh, monetary value of the meta decks they can still compete and also low cost but has good to high efficiency so even though these decks are cheap uh, it can have so much value for you in order to just play you know have a deck and fare against this very expensive oriented uh, meta game right now with the Fuaros uh, spiking up on price and also Little Knight and other generic cards are very expensive right now and not to mention the cores of Malice and Ryzeal are really expensive so I believe this video will help people to navigate the format with a budget option so moving on on our top 5 they have Alter Geist, no? So, Alter Geist. Moving forward on our description for Alter Geist. So, Alter Geist sample deck list here. Uh, take it with a grain of salt for every deck list here in this video because the deck list here are tailored for my deck list uh, deck building tendencies and preferences. So, feel free to edit or improve the deck list here on your own. So the strength of this uh, Alter Geist is very evident now. It can have an infinite grind game. So the grind game, oh my goodness, the grind game of Alter Geist is really exceptional. And there's not many decks that could outgrind you. That's the biggest uh, factor of Alter Geist. It has infinite resources on the grind game. And also tenacious around hand traps. So even though you are going to be suffering around something like force or maxi when you try to combo off no you are pretty much uh, resilient around imperms and other stuff like ghost ogre no and veilers so you can be resilient around the midrange decks that are very popular in this meta like ryzeal and also absolute tyrant in game one so this deck is really strong on game one there's not many decks that could answer this once this deck gets going it is very hard to stop and it is going to steamroll everyone once they have gotten the correct uh, play and also the momentum to carry on on the game one but it also comes with weaknesses no so alter guys can be very slow 
So this deck is very old, five year old deck already. So it is given that it is power crep. Sadly, I think most of the decks here are power crep by the better decks right now. But they can still have a chance and uh, win on some uh, normal occasions. So even though this can be very slow, I think in the hands of right pilot it can perform. But uh, the last weakness is the deck is not forgiving. So you have to do the correct plays, the correct interactions, the proper uh, navigation towards your opponent. Because if you mis uh, misplayed even once on this deck, you're going to suffer a lot. And you don't have rooms for error that much in this kind of deck. So it is not beginner friendly. And you are going to put in a very dire position to learn the mechanic and uh, navigate perfectly into this uh, current meta. Next, moving on towards our top 4 on our list. We do have Thunder Dragon. So another old deck now. It is a deck from 2018 or 2019. If I'm not mistaken, so Thunder Dragon is back once again in this meta. So we are going to see why. So of course the strength of Thunder Dragon is Colossus is a boss. We can never deny that once you set up Colossus, it is pretty much game over for most of the decks here. Especially likes of Ryzeal, Malice. Those can be really... Uh, lopsided against the Colossus. Once you set up Colossus, your opponent cannot add cards from their deck and most of the decks in the meta will going will be going to rely on add factors. So the Colossus is really phenomenal and the going first of Thunder Dragon is really uh, up there against the best decks available and also Colossus is tower and it is very hard to uh, out the Colossus and also can play around floodgates. So uh, even though you're a deck that relies on monsters, you are very much free to roam around the floodgates. Like on this list we are playing, there can be only one summon limit and skill drain. You are having an access towards the uh, floodgates and you don't have that much drawbacks around the uh, existent floodgates in the metagame. So we are going to capitalize on it as well by playing around floodgates and also playing the floodgates themselves. And also it is extremely cheap, no? So the Thunder Dragon core has been reprinted for a very couple of times already and the core is very cheap. You could definitely get the Thunder Dragon Colossus on something like uh, $20, no? So the only card that is expensive on the core was the Colossus itself. And you're only running two, of course. So I think you could get the core very cheap and you don't really have too much hand traps to play like Fuaros and Purulia. You only have Maxi and Shifter and the mandatory Ash Blossom to nullify the Maxi. And that's pretty much about it. Uh, it's very cheap. And also the weaknesses of this deck is it can be Lakadaisical going second. The problem of this deck is it heavily relies on setting up Colossus. And you could struggle. You may find, be, uh, you may find very hard to navigate your going second on this deck because you're going to rely on board breakers and also nine engines to go second and also fast paced decks can out tempo you easily so decks like malice once they go first or rizil even rizil no mementotlan voice voice all of the meta decks out there can really uh out hustle you or outpace you on every single day so that's why you're going to be very uh cautious on playing Thunder Dragon. Once you uh, use this deck, you're going to be more meticulous on uh, interrupting your opponent with the uh, Unicorn uh, Spin and also the Solemn Strikes and also uh, using your Ash Blossom effectively. So you're going to rely on the uh, smallest details to be able to execute it properly and use it against the best decks. So yeah. Looking on our list, uh, we don't play Little Knight because it is expensive. Instead, we are just going to uh, have the IP going to Unicorn. And yeah, moving on. We do have the top 3 on our list. We do have Elrich Zujak. So, this deck was relevant last 2020 or 2021 if I'm not mistaken. So, it used to be a meta deck back in the day. And I remember when I started first. Uh, I started 
uh, playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, first hand, I believe Eldritch Sujak is one of the best decks available in the OCG. So moving on on our deck list here. So Eldritch Zujak. So the strength of Eldritch Zujak is it is absolutely uh, going second despite being control. The Zujak enables you to go into Zeus and Zeus is at artery right now so you can put Zeus after Zeus and you are just basically going to wipe the boards of your opponent from that moment and it is the most notable weakness of Eldritch is the going second capacity of the deck but now you have Zodiac and you could also be more assertive when uh, breaking boards using this deck using the Zodiac and also it is very easy to use so the Eldritch mechanic is very much linear you're just going to uh, outgrind your opponent and stun them with powerful trap cards and floodgate and also the recursion of Eldritch is top notch as well with the Conquistador effects and Sanguine effects and Wakero effects you're going to have a seamless uh, grind game for this deck and also the Zujak is very linear as well even though you have combos on Zujak the goal is the same you're just going to set up the Dryden or something like Utopic Future no? and uh, capitalize on the going second prowess of Zujak making Zeus uh, effectively and also outstanding flexibility so the deck is flexible enough you are going to look into stunning the opponent with high impact traps with solemns and skill drain or summon limit and we are also playing the Dagda package because uh, we are playing the Scythe and the Sanctum so you could also stun your, your opponent when you are able to establish the Dagda or you are able to draw the Sanctum and uh, it comes with weaknesses as well the deck is very linear so what I meant about that is it is very telegraphic once you do some action your opponent probably knows what is going to happen next so it is very linear and I believe it can be punished by uh, skilled players and knowledgeable opponents no because they don't know uh, they know how the deck functions and they're able to anticipate every action that you're going to do on this kind of deck and also can struggle against spot and mass removals no cosmic cyclones uh, lightning storm uh, the, uh, Her herpes feather duster heavy storm so those four can annihilate your back row and if you don't draw the iron thunder or solemn judgment you are going to struggle very bad against those removals because your uh, conquistador and wakero are continuous uh, traps so you're going to rely on them to interrupt the opponent so yeah you're most likely going to lose once you have been wiped by those cards and yeah moving on towards the top two on our list you do have true draco zodiac so i believe it is the uh, deck to beat on 2017 2018 if i'm not mistaken so true draco zodiac probably Edge on everyone's mind if they are playing the game for that long already, no? Because I haven't played the game on those years. Uh, I only started 2021, but I have browsed the previous uh, tournament uh, results and uh, articles about the previous meta game. So I do think that True Drake Zujak is very reminiscent and nostalgic for a lot of people already at this age. So moving on towards the deck. So we do have True Drake Zujak. So the obvious strength of this deck is it has consistent layers of interruptions. You have interruptions from the Zodiac, from the Dryden, and also you have plethora of interruptions from the True Draco. And you're also able to play hand traps like Maxi, Forbidden Droplet, and the Im Infinite Impermanence to improve your navigation ag against the meta decks out there. And you're also a uh, deck that is potent. When going second, because uh, like Edlich through Draco suffers when when uh, going second, but with Zodiac you have access towards the Zeus to wipe the opponent, and also you could pretty much bait out hand traps effectively using the Ram Ram, the Toro Blade, and also the likes of the Borbo. No, so you have a lot of tools to use when going second using the Zodiac engine, and uh, it all it is also very balanced on every angles. You have layers on, of interruptions, you have floodgates, you have uh, going second cards like Droplet and, and Imperm 
and you also have consistency cards like the Desires and Tenki. So you are a very balanced deck. Probably one of the better rogue decks right now is the True Draco Zujak and it is the epitome of balance in this uh, current meta. And also the deck has obvious weaknesses as well. It can struggle on closing out games once you don't establish the correct uh, foundation to dominate or lead the game. No, you are going to struggle on closing out games because sometimes you are going to choose whether True Draco or Zujak play is the most optimal to navigate the mid game to late game instances, and you are going to rely on the multitudes of effects of the True Draco continuous uh, spells and traps, and also the Zujak uh, XYZ spams. So it can be difficult on closing out games. And also tight main deck now, it is obvious we, we just have desires, uh droplet, imperm and maxi as our uh leeway for this deck. So you don't have that much space for innovation on this kind of deck because the main deck is very tight and you're probably going to uh choose very hard on siding out cards and also slotting in cards when going into game 2 and 3. So yeah, you can struggle on the decisions on uh, what cards are going to stay on the main deck or what cards are going to be outed in this uh, main deck. So yeah, moving on. Moving on towards the top 1 on our top 5 budget decks post-October 2024 uh, ban list, we do have True Draco. So it is none other than True Draco. It has been 7 years that we have last seen the Masterpiece and now Masterpiece is back to bring the glory back for True Draco and stun the opponents, control the match, and dominate every Game 1 and Game 3 on this uh, format due to how uh, the nature of the deck can be uh, controlling and can also stun the opponents. And even though True Draco is a very old deck, I believe it has the position to perform in this uh, metagame and it is probably the best budget deck that you can be able to afford right now and still compete at the highest level. So moving on towards the sample list of our True Draco. So it is none other than the stun. I think stun is the name of the game for True Draco. You are going to stun the opponents from limiting their extra deck plays. You are going to limit their effects on the field you're going to answer every action that you're going to make so stun is definitely a strong essence in this uh, modern game even though the decks are high tempo quick pace and also consistent on every levels now i think stun is a mechanic that will not go out of style because you're just going to stun the opponent and no matter how skilled they are if they are stunned they are stunned they cannot do anything about it and it is a very large equalizer on this uh, modern game. The moment that you could stun the opponent and just command the position to win the game on a very commanding level. So I think True Draco ho also has immense draw power. It is one of the best uh, traits of the deck. You have Demise, you have Duality, you have Desires to improve your hand cards and generate card advantages. And also True Draco can be built extremely cheap and will still have decent showcasing. So... I have projected that this deck will rank on tier 3, tier 4 around the tier list right now and also Japanese people also have a uh, claim that True Draco will be a very potent deck on this format and even though it is extremely cheap, you don't even have extra deck on our list here so you could uh, be very budget and still be able to win games in this meta that's why it is the best uh, budget deck out there and also the True Draco have uh, very glaring weaknesses. It is the struggle of going second. You're likely going to lose when going second because most of your, your cards doesn't do anything when going second. And you're going to rely on board breakers. Uh, that's why I have played the Trust and the Cruder and also the Evenly Match with the Storm and Duster duo on your side deck. To be able to have a chance when going second because it is very bad. It is one of the uh, biggest weakness of the deck when uh, you don't have the board breakers or non engines to deal when going second. And also, it has chunks of bricks. So, I think 
true day ko players have been uh, testimony for that, no? Because the deck have a lot of garnets and you will also rely on continuous traps and con- continuous spells. So sometimes it could re- be really bricky when uh, you draw the uh, unessential cards and also the inappropriate cards when going first or even going second, no? And also the floodgates doesn't also help because floodgates doesn't do anything when going second and you're also going to rely on duality desires and demise to uh, recuperate your hand and fix the hand card issues that you're going to face on this deck but all in all i think true draco is a very solid deck right now and it is the best time to buy the deck because the results haven't been shown uh right now and i guess we're going to see a lot of true draco on local tournaments and they're going to be posted sooner than later and the core will will uh have a price hike and the market will definitely be favorable for the sellers to sell the true draco at a higher price now so i believe this is the best time to get the deck while it is not really expensive at this uh, current state so yeah that sums up our top five best budget decks in october 2024 uh post ban list format so if you found this video informative and helpful please consider subscribing into my youtube channel it definitely motivates me a lot to keep providing this content for you guys so once again thank you for watching see you in the next one peace